Hey guys, time for Weekly Weird News. This past weekend saw the UK's first ever Flat Earth Convention in the city of Birmingham, which was attended by Flat Earthers from all around, or all across, the globe. Or a disc-shaped flat object. I don't know what it looks like. Well, this meeting of the minds was the first time many of the convention's 200 attendees had the chance to talk to like-minded individuals in person instead of just on internet message boards. And they could really flesh out the finer points of flat earth theory. Mm. And, uh, well, unfortunately, it turns out that aside from the basic fact that the earth is flat and not spherical, there's actually a good amount of disagreement over the finer points of how that all actually works. The truth seekers and free thinkers in the audience and on stage at the event offered up various theories, some very much at odds with each other. Uh, one uh, which involves Pac-Man. We'll, we'll get to those in a moment, but first let's refresh our memory on parts of, of the Flat Earth Theory that these folks actually agree on, mostly, by consulting the Frequently Asked Questions section of the website for the Flat Earth Society, a site that in all reality shouldn't exist and proves that the internet was a mistake. Mm -hmm. First and foremost, uh, this is the most frequently asked question. Uh, are you serious? Well, the answer is yes. Yes, oh, they are serious. Okay. Yeah. This isn't some NBA player just joking about it in the after game conversation. These people are serious. Although they might be too, who knows. All right, with that out of the way, if the Earth is in fact flat, well, what the heck does it actually look like? And what's that tortoise's name that's carrying it on its back? As evidenced by the logo of the United Nations, the Earth is a round disk of indefinite dimensions. Huh. Yeah, it turns out the evil idiots over at the UN goofed and accidentally revealed the Earth's true form in their logo. It's right there, taunting us, and you round earthers don't even notice. I like how the term for round earthers isn't just normal person. Round earthers. Now, you may be wondering, if the Earth is flat, how do you explain day and night? Mm -hmm. Well, round earthers would have you believe that the sun is massive and really far away, and that the round Earth is lit up on whatever side is facing the sun. <laughs> okay, buddy. Yeah. Actually, the sun is really small, and it follows a circular path above the Earth. And, um, well, the, the reason that the whole Earth isn't just constantly lit up by it is because uh, it's uh, sort of like a spotlight or something that only lights up the parts of the Earth that is directly above. Boom! No, around 7 p.m. every night, God closes the blinds. <laughs> oh, uh, also, while the uh, UN map of the Earth shows it as a disk, that does not mean Antarctica is at the edge. Actually, what's most likely is that the Earth is just one section of an infinite plane that just keeps on going. What's beyond Antarctica? Probably something so cool and awesome that the governments of the world don't want us to know about it. Yeah. Like the castle where God lives or something. Uh, whatever it is, they're hiding it from us, and that's all we know. Here's a section of the frequently asked questions that tackles the tricky question of just why the hell there would be a global conspiracy to hide the flat Earth truth from us. Global. Fun word. Uh, yeah, they need a new word for that. Yeah. Why would people lie about the shape of the Earth? There are three common explanations for this, but in the end, without toppling the planar conspiracy, there is no real way to know. Number one, to maintain legitimacy. During the Cold War, we faked the moon landing. Shortly after, they realized the reason they could not reach the moon was due to the flatness of the Earth. They were stuck in a lie and had to continue it or lose legitimacy of our governments. Even today, we would still hold on to this lie due to the role science plays in our ruling government. Boo! Yeah, it's like when you lie to your friends and say you have a girlfriend, but she lives in Canada. Yeah. You just, you got and then you have to move there, just yeah, like school did. Yeah, you have to <laughs> yeah. really like live the yeah. lie. Or when you tell people that you had no idea that your lawyer paid off a porn star of $130,000 and that obviously you didn't pay that money, but then mm -hmm. it comes to light that maybe you did, so you admit it because your new lawyer, Rudy Giuliani, is an asshole and a piece of shit and also very dumb, apparently. Yeah. Anyway, number two. <laughs> Obviously they're doing this. To hide the truth of the Bible. Yeah. We got this all right over 2,000 years ago, guys. Mm -hmm. And number three, to gain power and money. By siphoning off the space budgets and denying the world the resources of the Antarctic, they gain a considerable amount of power and wealth. Yeah. Because like we said, there's all that cool shit back there. Yeah. Probably like unlimited energy, God's house. I mean, uh, proof, Garden of Eden. The proof is right there. Elon Musk is a genius, not because of the way that he's innovating energy and, and transportation, but because he is now involved in the deep state. And he learned that if you really want to make a lot of money, you have to act like you're going to space. Right. So he created SpaceX as a shell corporation to feed money into his other project, which is most likely feeding the lizard government that lives below the airport in Denver. 
Yeah, and I mean, I mean, it, it, we're to, talking deep state. He's literally digging tunnels deep, yeah. deep into, into the, the state, earth, the state of California. Yeah, yeah. Oh my god. And that's where they live, deep in the state of Colorado. I mean, we just need to get over to Colorado in the deep. Yeah, through a tunnel. When we say it with confidence, it makes sense, right, guys? Checkmate. Sorry, I think we just did more harm than good here. Yeah. So uh, there you have it. Uh, here's some more flat Earth facts. Gravity is fake news. Oh yeah. Objects. Simply fall. Mm -hmm. Deal with it. Let's just they God's do it. Plan. They fall, but it's not gravity. Gravity's fake, but everything is. It does fall from up here down to the earth. God's plan. Boom. Um, also, uh, the Earth might be flat, but hey, guess what? The other planets are actually spheres. Mm -hmm. They're the out thick there. Thick planets. <laughs> thick boys. <laughs> yeah. They're out there in the sky somewhere beyond the dome that surrounds our section of the infinite plane. Yeah. The dome, of course, known as the firmament, which mm -hmm. was described all the way back in the Bible. Again, guys. Yeah. Duh. We had it all right. And then these dickheads like Newton had to come along, ruin everything. Yeah. Also, astronauts are liars. They've been bribed or coerced into telling tall tales. Some of them were even fooled, silly astronauts. Yeah. And also, uh, anyone who says they can see the curvature of the Earth from an airplane is sadly mistaken, because airplane windows are designed to make it look that way. Yeah. This was a ploy by the airline companies to sell more tickets back when commercial air travel first started out. Because, of course, it wasn't enough to say, hey, you can fly to your destination now, people are like, okay, whatever. So, yeah. Uh, also, you can see the curvature of the Earth. Well, you gotta sign me up. Yeah. Shit. Am I blowing your fucking mind right That's now? That's why they make, a, when they assign your seats, they don't let flat earthers sit by the windows. Yeah, they, they so They're gotta, just gonna sit there and experiment on it. They got a deep it. state database. Yeah. You sit in the aisle. Mm hmm You get up anytime that window boy has to take a shit. Yes. So anyways, with the airtight argument out of the way, let's check in on the UK Flat Earth Convention. Writer Michael Marshall of The Guardian attended the event to gain some insight into the movement and found that there's more disagreement among Flat Earthers than you might expect. One of the event's speakers, musician Darren Nesbitt, rejects the flat disc model of the Earth as counterintelligence meant to throw people off from the truth and told audiences, you can't just trust YouTube. You have to be your own authority. Okay, I guess we kind of agree with what this guy is saying. I'm, I don't trust myself in the in many fields. And I will trust the knowledge of people who have been there and done things. Sheep? No. I'm not just gonna go digging into the power cords of the lamp I wanna hang. That's how you end up dead, Elliot. But there might be a microphone in it. I, I purchased Bob Vila's kitchens and bathrooms to learn how to install all my appliances. Bob Vila? He's part of the deep state. Yeah, him and George Soros, they... They're having dinner right now. I mean, I've never seen them together. Yeah. That's the plan. Well, anyway, uh, Nesbitt here, the guy, he what he believes is that the Earth is actually a diamond shape oh. that's held up by seven circular pillars, uh -huh. quote, because God likes the number seven. Well, seven, seven, seven. Of course, yeah. yeah. Uh, also, it's unclear what this diamond Earth looks like, but it apparently doesn't feature the North Pole in the center like the rest of the guy's maps with the earth fanning out from that. Because mm -hmm. uh, in his version of the flat earth, there's uh, edges on the east and west sides, which we're able to cross because there are 4D space-time warps on the edges, which allow Pac-Man-style travel, ah. where you cross the west edge and you instantly pop up on the east side that makes sense. of the flat diamond map. Now, this obviously makes more sense than anything the last 2,000 years of astronomy has proposed, and it's, it's actually supported by the Bible this time, so checkmate, roundies. Even if the argument is that in space, Sure, it looks like a, a, a globe, but it's really just a flat, like a like a penny. But even this doesn't make sense with that. No, it's the 4D space-time warps. You're, come on, it's, it's, it's not that hard. Anyways, uh, yeah, uh, Nesbitt's version of Flat Earth directly contradicts the model most of the attendees subscribed to, so it was a little bit awkward, I'm sure. Uh, more awkwardness actually went down before the event even began, though, when American Flat Earther Mark Sargent was featured in interviews on the BBC and Good Morning Britain, where he was roundly mocked and fact-checked by actual scientists. Uh, the organizers of the event didn't appreciate the negative attention he was bringing, so they called him to ask him to chill the fuck out which Sargent didn't appreciate, choosing to publicly and acrimoniously withdraw from the event. Take that. The Sargent is a flat earth superstar though, mm -hmm. so his ideas were still quite popular at the convention. Uh, yeah. One attendee- I don't agree with his method, <laughs> but uh, all right. I wish he hadn't done that interview. It made us look bad, but he makes a lot of good points. Mm -hmm. uh, one attendee of the convention showed the author of this Guardian article his favorite piece of evidence for flat earth, a Mark Sargent video. And uh, let's just read this part verbatim. It shows the height of the planes as they fly, he told me, excitedly. If the Earth was round, we'd see their heights all change as they fly over the curve. 
Uh, isn't it measuring altitude, I asked? So that's the elevation above the ground. If the ground curved and the plane's path naturally curved with it, it would stay the same distance from the ground, which is exactly what we see in the video, don't we? He paused for a moment. That's interesting, he said. I'll have to think about that. I'm gonna go back to my lab and <laughs> think about it. Anyways, there's also a debate over what exactly the moon is. The prevailing flat earth belief is that it's just a 35 mile wide object the same size as the sun floating around above us, but flat earther Dave Marsh presented his theory based on experiments he conducted in his backyard looking at the sky. The moon is a projection put there for a reason, which we could study for a thousand more years and never understand. So essentially he had no answer. Well, it's a mystery to Pretty me. Much. And therefore a mystery to everyone else. <laughs> Is Pretty it made much. of cheese? We don't know. We don't know. It's a mystery. We don't know. It could be made of cheese. All possibilities are equally possible. Yeah. At least he's being fair. Mm-hmm. Another flat earth celebrity, Dave Murphy, they all have such standard names. Yeah. Almost like they're crisis actors. It's almost like they're, they're so stereotypically bland that this is the only thing that brings their life any kind of excitement or originality. Yeah. Anyways, Dave Murphy <laughs> dedicated his talk to debunking the debunkers, which began with refuting arguments by scientists like Neil deGrasse Tyson, which everyone was on board with. But then uh, he veered into debunking theories from his fellow flat earthers, like the idea that the moon is transparent or that you can see clouds behind the moon. Yeah, not as popular that that section of the speech. <laughs> uh, I only it's, I like the first part. Just, no. But anyway, back to Darren Nesbitt, the uh, diamond-shaped Pac-Man Earth guy. So during his presentation, he shared what he calls the Flat Earth Addiction Test, a series of questions that flat earthers should ask themselves. The questions included, have people said that you are pushy or obsessive about flat earth? Have you thought that if only everyone knew about flat earth, the world would be a different place? And have you noticed that you spend less and less time with your family and friends and more and more time talking to flat earthers? Audience members nodded in agreement during these questions until Nesbitt revealed, that his set of questions was actually a modified version of a questionnaire that's used to determine if someone's in a cult. Oh, well, Ooh, awkward. Yeah. You need to call the addiction network. Uh, so yeah, it's looking like this Nesbit guy might just be a shill for the globalists and probably Namco, I guess. Yeah. Uh, thankfully, despite all this disagreement and factionalism within the already small community of flat earthers, everyone will be on the same page once rocket man Mike Hughes is able to complete his plan to carry his homemade rocket up in the atmosphere with a balloon and then launch it 68 miles above the Earth to prove once and for all that there is no curve and maybe see what NASA's hiding out there behind the Antarctic wall. Hopefully Mad Mike can uh, lay some of these questions to rest because yeah. we're all on the edge of our Earths waiting for the right answer. Of course, I'm know, sitting on the edge of my planet waiting. Depending on what information he comes back with. He might end up being. Well, this could be a psyop. He's a globalist. Yeah, that's what they should call all uh, non-flat earthers, globalists. Yeah, take that. Yeah. Anyway, let's move on to some uh, headlines. Boom. Starting with uh, one of my favorite. Australian boy flies to Bali after stealing his mom's credit card. And that boy's name, Kevin McAllister. Oh, that's fun. No, it wasn't. Manifest name. destiny. Oh. It is. Uh, he basically. It's a, it, it's home alone, except he didn't wait around for his parents to leave. Yeah, he him went on his own. Yeah. Yeah, I uh, I never knew that Bali was the Cancun of Australia until I went, mm -hmm. and it, it definitely is. Yeah. They're actually, like, it, 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 Australian tourists everywhere. It is spring break zone for Australians. Yeah. It's wild. Uh, I had a great time because I just went Wait to. Wait and wild. I went to, like, the inland area away from the beach where you know most of the tourists are. I mean, there's still a ton of tourists there, but all the Australians, they love the beach. Mm -hmm. But a uh, great place to go if you're stealing your mom's credit card. Yeah, and he was there for like 10 days. Oh, you can get, it's, it's very cheap. Yeah, so this kid, he, he tricked his grandma into giving him his passport, stole his mom's credit card, went on the internet to figure out which airlines would allow a child to fly alone ah. so he wouldn't Air run into any trouble. And uh, yeah, he did it. Yeah. Probably had a great time too. Bali Kai Love Robinson. <laughs> uh, moving on though, pizza delivery man gets $180,000 settlement after being crushed by 400 pounds of cheese. <laughs> that sucks. Yeah, but I mean, it's cheese. Did he eat his way out? Yeah, uh, I mean, I would have. Yeah. I would have. Like a little worm. Mm -hmm. Just, mm, get yeah. me out of here. I mean, yeah. 400 pounds of anything is gonna cause you a lot of trouble. Yeah. So, yeah, he apparently has to get like a hip replacement and some shit. So well, yeah, then he deserves probably it. Probably pretty bad. Yeah. yeah. 
more Australian news. Australian thieves left with nasty taste after accidentally siphoning sewage tank instead of petrol. Oh! <laughs> we just oh. Plug, put this end of the hose in here, put this end in my mouth, give it a big old tugger. Well, even when you siphon gas, you're not supposed to like taste it. You're supposed to give it enough and then go and see if it goes out. Yeah, but that's, I mean, you gotta be really tough. And the kids these days, they don't know how to siphon. This is more yeah. of like a, you had to be alive in the 70s yeah. or 80s to learn Back that. Back in my day. Back in my day when there were uh, less features on a car that would stop you from stealing someone else's gas, mm -hmm. you could do it really easily, especially when Jimmy Carter was in the office and gas rose up to 65 cents a gallon. Are you kidding me? No, I'll steal it from my rich neighbors. Yeah. Back then, as we all know, gas stations, it was literally just a giant tank that you had to bring your own hose to and <laughs> siphon it into your cook. Eh, but still, uh, the good, they got what they deserved. Yeah. It was, it was mouthful like karma. Of, mouthful of duty. Mouthful of doo doo, baby. Man arrested for practicing karate on swans, kicking them in the head. This happened in Florida, didn't it? It did. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, bad idea to practice any. I mean, they are a worthy opponent. They're, no, I, I'm surprised they didn't fight back and kick this guy's ass. <laughs> Swans will fuck you up. But still, it is a bit unfair as a human to fight a swan. Fight something your own size or bigger, like a bear. I mean, I think a swan's a more fair fight what, than a bear. But what would this guy do if like a bear came up and was like, hey, bam, kicked him right in the face? Do bears kick? They do now. Karate bear. Yeah, exactly. For too long, bears have just been using their top hands. Yeah, and their stupid mouths. Yeah. Shut your mouth and kick, bear. Uh, but yeah, this makes sense because it's in Florida and they, I mean, are the swans okay? Yeah, they're tough. They're resilient. They I, don't, I don't think he killed any of them. Yeah. Uh, they've, I'm sure they've hit their heads on things harder than that. They, they, got, a, they got those big old long necks. They're, they're nice and stretchy. Yeah, you, yeah, you yeah. Can just like shibby. Yeah. yeah. Japan. Robot dogs get solemn Buddhist send off at funerals. Yeah, uh, these those Ibo dogs yeah. apparently more popular than I would have guessed. Mm -hmm. Like people, once they, uh, you know, they, they go beyond repair, can't can't repair them anymore. People get real sad. They yeah. they send them to a Buddhist temple to have a funeral, and then they they salvage them for parts. <laughs> well, it's, I mean, it's, it's just like Buddha. Are they, yeah. No, are they on like a uh, organ donor list? Um, and then the family of the new dog is like, thank God he gave his diodes to my dog, I, which needed them so badly. I mean, it's sort of a form of a reincarnation. Yeah. I'm like, this Ibo may be dead, but his soul, aka his, his circuit, batteries, his circuit yes. board and batteries, yeah. live on mm -hmm. in one of the newer models. Yes. It's beautiful. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Isn't natural life beautiful? Yes. University student who filmed flatmates in the shower asks for privacy. This is kind of like how, uh, uh, what's his name? Uh, uh, Fucking, I'm already forgetting his name. The fucking YouTube conspiracy guy. Alex Jones. Alex Jones. He's yeah. like, hey, whoa, I'm whoa, being whoa. defamed I'm by being my defamed. defamation laws. Yeah. yeah, yeah, this guy stuck a camera in the shower to film his girl roommates and then they caught him and now he's, he's not really liking all the reporters who want to talk to him about it. They should just hide a camera in his shower. They should. And then question him in there. They should. Yeah. Kim Jong-un is bringing his own toilet to the Korea summit. <laughs> I don't know, last time I sat down on a South Korean toilet, it wiped my ass for me with water. <laughs> yeah. I don't like it. What is this South Korean voodoo? Yeah. I uh, like squatting. Apparently, so I, I, I would love to get a look at this toilet. He, so he travels mostly by train. Yeah. There's an entire train car that is his bathroom train car. Oh, good. And then when he travels by- Well, you don't want to have people smelling or hearing your, your duty. Yeah. But also, I thought he didn't poop. Oh, yeah. Maybe that was his dad. He's just, he's, well, he's taking a piss. But he pisses sitting down because he yeah. respects women. But he also, when he travels in like vehicle convoys, another vehicle is literally the toilet car. Yeah. And he will only go to the bathroom in one of his personal. Well, that's because Kim family toilet. That's because anyone that's nearby will be like, yeah, he's just pissing. He pisses all, you know, all the time, even when. Yeah. He doesn't need to. He just goes and sits down for some privacy. Yeah. He's probably like, oh, I can't use regular toilets because my dick will land in the water because it's so long. The West calls this a throne? <laughs> then I will bring it everywhere with me. I, I, need, a, I need a big dick toilet with a, a much We can sell toilet. him a big dick toilet real easy. Yeah. Big dick, the big dick toilet sells itself. Yeah. It's like when you go to Hooters and you yeah. order a beer and you want that like little girl size, you want it man size. You fucking pussy. You fucking cook? Yeah. All right, I'll get man size. Border Patrol agents find an abandoned duffel bag with a tiger inside of it. Was it alive? Uh, it was heavily sedated, mm. but still alive. It was like four months old. Very, I mean, not cool. Yeah. But also, a lot of unanswered questions here. So it was like, 
a, a group of guys were trying to cross into Texas, I believe, from Mexico. Where did they get the tiger? I don't know. So the Border Patrol spotted them, and they, they ran away. They, they dumped the duffel bag. But it's like, why are they trying to bring a fucking young tiger into America? Well, obviously they wanted to ride on its back so it could climb over the wall for them. That possibly, yeah. What we need to do is let Trump know about tiger-proof walls. Yeah, yeah, because we didn't we didn't plan for this. Or maybe they by the time they got to the wall, they knew that they wouldn't have enough energy and virality to get over the wall. So they brought the tiger so they could suck its dick before trying to climb the wall. Okay. Because as everyone knows, yeah. if you consume tiger penis, you yeah. become strong and that's right and and, and horny. But you can use that. The horny Chinese energy. learned this long ago. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe it was like a distraction. Like, oh my god, a tiger! <laughs> <laughs> like, all right, go. <laughs> I was like, what the fuck? Why yeah. is there a tiger out here? Yeah. Let's chase the tiger. Yeah. Now I, I subscribe to they wanted to suck its dick. I mean, anything's possible. Mm -hmm. But it's like if these guys were caught, how many other people have successfully smuggled tigers into the U.S. from Mexico? Also, how the tiger get to Mexico? There's a lot of questions. Drug cartels. Could they? You know. Those guys have expensive tastes. Yeah. Pablo Escobar, his, he had all kinds of shit. His hippopotamuses are still roaming free in Colombia, yeah. disrupting the whole fucking biome. Mm hmm. So, I, yeah, big if true. Detroit police crack down on citywide paintball wars. This goes on all the time. This People are a, always fucking around with paintball guns. This is a very misguided plan. They're like, Detroit has a lot of gun violence. So, how about. We all buy paintball guns, and then we can shoot each other in the street. Well, no, because then you'll be fun. shooting like crazy. The paintballs are very cheap, and they don't kill anyone. So. Yeah, well, that's what happened. Well, uh, a okay. bunch of cop cars got shot, but it, it, it got out of hand very fast. Yeah, like, guys, the this secret, is the <laughs> secret is you put the paintballs in the freezer. Oof, yeah. If you want to be an asshole. Yeah, it's, it hurts. It's like yeah. a bullet then. Yeah. Final like headline. A rubber bullet. <laughs> it's like a, literally a rubber yeah. bullet. Final headline. Human bones make for terrific daggers. According to research. Well, yeah. <laughs> we looked into it. These bones make for great knives. You know, the, Mayan, know. the Mayans were onto something. Yeah, well, they were. Like, so they, they looked into, like, apparently in Papua New Guinea, mm -hmm. like, the most trusted blades are made from, like, human bones. Yeah. And so they, they were like, okay, so we should look into this. Like, how good actually are these bone knives? And yeah. they're like, pretty fucking good, actually. Yeah. Make, well, I mean, it makes sense. Yeah, better than, like, any other animals. Like, we have the best knife bones. Yeah. Well, and they're one solid piece, too. Like, if you have, like, a regular knife where you're attaching forged steel or metal to a handle, yeah. like, that handle could break. Too many points of failure. Yeah you, need, yeah, you need one solid piece. Yeah. Yeah. The hip bone's connected to the knife bone. And the only the only way to stop a bad guy with a human bones, knife with a human body made of bones is a good guy with a bone knife. Now, you gotta get, like, a, a hip bone to be your shield. Yeah. It's stabby. Well, at least we know this now. Yeah. Yeah. We're all walking around just full of weapons. <laughs> I'm made out of weapons. Yeah, watch out. Yeah. Anyways, that's it for our show this week. Be sure to watch a brand new episode of Tech News Day and also a brand new episode of Tugged where, guess what? If you cheat at video games, you're going to get fucking arrested now. You're going to jail. Shit's getting serious, damn it. Watch the Tugs. Watch the Tech. We'll see you next time. Bye.